Good morning, everyone. Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, thank you for all coming to church today and for all of our members on Facebook and visitors today coming to Christ Lutheran. We appreciate you being here. And well, um, today I was practicing before church and we have these lovely flowers. Um, Levon's husband, Wayne, who passed away 10 years ago. So this is in memory of him. So uh, it's hard to believe it's been 10 years, huh, Levon? Where are you? <laughs> Trying to, there you are. So pray for you and your family. And then our VBS is this week. It's from 6.30 to 8. If your family would like to join, please do. There's this um, just outside the narthex to fill out. So we have some information on your child or children. So in case anything does happen, we have the information to call and the address. So please fill this out if you are able. And uh, also our new member meeting is this June 26 at seven o'clock. During this week, you hopefully will be getting a letter sent out. If you're a new member this past year or in the past year or two, we're going to be having the meeting on the 26th at 7 and discussing our church, of our ministries, our boards, and our committees, and everything else that our church can provide for you and that you could be part of if you would like. And I was told, make sure I don't miss this, some of the ladies might not be too happy, the Peace Circle at 9 o'clock on Wednesday I guess it's usually at sunrise, but this time it's going to be at our church. Is that right, Deb? Is that correct? So make sure you come to the church and not to sunrise this Wednesday at 9 o'clock. But otherwise, I think I have all the uh, information announcements ready. So please stand and we will start our service. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we perfectly may love you and worthily magnify your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sins, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's now take a moment of silence for reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we're in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you and thought we indeed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare all your sins forgiven in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You may be seated as we sing our first hymn, Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness, number 396.
please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. All powerful God, in Jesus Christ, you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. First reading is found in Genesis chapter 3. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The servant tri serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. The word of God, the word of life. The psalm is Psalm 130. We read responsibly. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness in you, that you may be feared. I wait for you, O Lord. My soul waits. In your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep more than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For the Lord there is steadfast love, and the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the Lord. The second reading is found in 2 Corinthians in chapter 4. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away. Our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Word of God, word of life. According to Mark, the third chapter. 
So Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again, so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has, he has Bezebel, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him, and he spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. But no, but no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of eternal sin. For they have said, He has unclean spirits. Then his mother and his brother came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him and said to him, Your mother and brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And, he, and Jesus replied, who are my brothers? Who's my sisters? And looking around at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother, and here are my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother, my sister, and my mother. Here ends our gospel for our gospel reading today. Praise all right, you may all be seated. If I can have the kids come up real quick. Oh. Do we got brave kids today in this nice, beautiful, non-windy, rainy day? Oh, it's so nice, no rain, no wind for a change. Oh, we got some brave kids and they're running up here. This is wonderful. How are you guys all doing today? Well, I want to show you something. And if you guys don't mind standing up, stand up real quick and look out at this crowd. Do you see this crowd out here? They're all very young, don't you think? Very young crowd, good looking crowd, kind of like you guys, right? Well, okay, at least they're good looking, right? Maybe, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, you can sit down, you can sit down. Well, this is a picture on our Facebook page. It's back, I think way back in August of last year, so roughly about a year. This is our church family. And do you guys have any pictures of your, of your family at home? You don't have any? You have no pictures of your family at home? Wow, that's sad. <laughs> I'm guessing you do have pictures at home of your family. And well, on mine, I got a picture of my family. Oh, if I know, I just lost it. But there's my wife and I on my phone. I don't know, you, do you guys have phones yet? I hope not, but maybe you do. Maybe kids have phones at the age of one when, I don't know, who knows. But our families are very important to us. And so is our church family as well. You know, when problems happen, who do you go running to? Do you go running to mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, or anything? Yeah, most of us do. And as we get older, we maybe run to our spouse, maybe our brother's sister, and they try to help us out through what we're going through. But then there's some fun things as well. Like um, th today, later, I'm going to my family reunion up in the cities. So it's gonna be a lot of fun to see my family I haven't seen in a long time. I got this crazy uncle from Hawaii who's gonna be up there. So it'll be fun to see him and his family. And just reuniting with all the amazing stories that we have. And that's what summer can be about, reuniting with your family and being with one another. And well, again, our church family here is here for everyone. We're, we're all a little crazy, we're all a little nutty, as it says in our gospel today, when they said, is Jesus out of his mind? Yeah, we're like that, out of your mind. We can all be crazy for God sometimes, they think we're crazy, but it's a beautiful crazy to have in our lives, especially our family and our loved ones who care for us. And so the next time you're going through some challenging times, like you lost your best doll or something, you can run to your parents, and maybe they can find it for you. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time of fellowship with your children, and to remind us all that we are all a family of one under this church, under this house of God that you provide us each and every day, and that you are with us through the Holy Spirit. May we always remember this in our lives. Amen. 
and you can go back to your family. Nice seeing you all here. <laughs> now let's see if my phone works. All right. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, there is this quote from Abraham Lincoln back in 1858. He says, a house divided against itself cannot stand. This is a quote back when they had the free states and the slave states. Abraham Lincoln knew that this house would not, the United States would have a challenging time if they continually be divided. He wanted to tell the people they had to get united. They had to be a one united house. And then he also said, I do not expect the union to be dissolved. I do not expect the house to fall, but I do expect it will cease to be divided. It will become all one or all nothing. And this is quite the quote, and maybe you heard it before from Abraham Lincoln. And so it made me think about our family, or the job you might have, or the church you have, and how we unite as a family of God under his house. And there are some kids, I love getting quotes from kids, and this one is from a 14-year-old boy. He said, to me, family means much more than a relative by blood or marriage. It means the people who accept you no matter who you are in life. Where there's no hatred or judgment, the love of a family should be unconditional, and everyone should try their best to provide all they can for the people in their family, emotionally and financially. And a 12-year-old girl said this about a family. Everything people learn comes from how their family brought them up. Therefore, everything you are is because of your family. And finally, a 10-year-old boy said this. Families are different than friends. They love each other with a different love. Family members never leave each other behind. <laughs> I like that one. Families never leave each other behind. Well, the family is the most important thing in your life. Next to God, of course, that is. I mean, if a child doesn't learn those valuable lessons, how will they perform when they become adults? Will they be able to be successful? It made me think. Because, you know, at times, as young people, as adults, we can stray away from God because of one issue or another from our families, and then we separate from the Lord because of it. And so today, I want to discuss the family and the church and how we can grow as one united family under God's house today. The gospel reading today is from Mark chapter 3. I'm going to be discussing verse 25 and 31 through 35. Jesus said in verse 25, If a house is divided, it will not be able to stand. And then verse 31, Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived standing outside. They sent someone to go get Jesus. A crowd was sitting around him in the house, and they told him, Your mother and brother are looking for you. And so Jesus, he turns this into a teaching moment, and he says, Who are my mothers? Who are my brothers and sisters in Christ? And then he said, he looked at those around them and said, Here are my mothers and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother, my sister, and my mother. I mean, have you ever really thought of this gospel reading before? I mean, think about it. Here's the family. They're outside of the house. There's members who believe in Jesus Christ inside the house. At that moment, his family, remember, they thought he was out of his mind. They didn't believe that their own brother, their own son, was actually the Messiah. And so this was definitely a divided house. And to me, this is one of the many times where Jesus, he's trying to tell us all that we are a family of God. It doesn't matter if you're Lutheran, Catholic, Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist, or if you're white, black, Hispanic, Asian. It just doesn't matter. He's saying we are all a family of God, regardless of who we may be. And Charles Hodge once said this about family. The church is everywhere. It represents as one. It is one body, one family, one fold, one kingdom of God. It is one spirit. We are all baptized by the spirit of God. So we are a family of God's house. 
But where does this start? How do we get to know about Jesus Christ? Well, it doesn't matter if it's biological or like us. We all might not be the same last name, but we are all part of God's family. And the gospel writer continued with these words. He said, then Jesus looked at these seed in the circle around him and said, here's my mother, here's my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother, my sister, and my mother. So it starts in the family body with both parents, maybe grandparents, or maybe it's a guardian taking care of the children. But hopefully, who's ever caring for these children are raising them up to be great adults who will continue to follow Jesus. But this family will hopefully be knit together by Jesus. And like myself, I'm going to the Duffy family reunion here after this to reconnect with those people I haven't seen in a while. My uncle, he's in Hawaii. I haven't seen him in about six, seven years. So it'd be fun to reconnect. And it's like Jesus, he wasn't always there for all those people, but they knew about him and they knew through the Holy Spirit that he would always be with them. And so a church is just like that family. You might have seen our church family picture or the one I just showed. You know, you think about all of us here. We all have different lives. We all come from different backgrounds. But yet here we are in God's house today. And again, just so nobody thinks we're nuts, it says in verse 21, Jesus is out of his mind. Think about that for a moment. I mean, my kids call me that all the time. They call me crazy. Yet, we hopefully would do anything for one another here today. We would sacrifice our time and talents to make sure everybody's doing all right. And so, you think about that. How many times did Jesus go out of his way to care for another human being? He could have just said, no, I'm done today. I'm not going to help anyone else. But what does he do? He, he takes care of them. He heals those people, even though he might have been exhausted at that time. And Chuck Swindell even said, a family as a church is a place where principles are hammered and honed on the me melting pot of everyday living. And it made me think of Psalm 133.1. It talks about God's promises for the families and churches and how we are so blessed when we believe in Jesus Christ and the prosperity we will receive by believing in him. And Psalm 133.1 says, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. This psalm talks about how you can count on your family, regardless if they're 100 or 101 years old. They'll always be there for you. And I pray that Christ Lutheran is doing that for you. And it made me think of this Bible passage today. I started to think, what did he really mean when this was written? Did he mean just your physical family that you have? Or did he mean everybody who would be a followers of Jesus Christ? Well, here's Jesus. He's redefining the criteria for the constitution of a true family. Jesus claims what it might mean to belong to him. He claims identity with those willing to follow him through thick and thin. Families were the primary social and economic units of the first century society. So Jesus spoke deeply of the culture that was embedded with these people and how they could all become one regardless of who they are and what they may do in their lives. I mean, look around our sanctuary today and also our Facebook family. Do you know everybody that is here today? <laughs> maybe, maybe you don't, but we're all under God's house today. And maybe you're a visitor today. Why did you come? And why are you part of Christ Lutheran? How long have you been a member of our church? And why? Turn to your neighbor and tell them, if you're a visitor, if you've been here for many years, why did you choose Christ Lutheran? Well, we come together, maybe because we find our church a welcoming church, where you can come regardless of who you are or what you may be going through in your life. There is no shame when you come to our church. We try to care for everyone, because most likely we've all been going through different challenges throughout our lives and our different ages in our lives. I mean, you may be a farmer, a banker, a teacher, a person who works at a hospital, a gas station, 
Maybe you're a retired person. Maybe you're a young kid. Maybe you're a teenager. Maybe you're a college kid. You know, we all have different dreams, different goals in our lives, but yet we all have the same goal and same belief in following Jesus Christ. And so, <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. I, I've been here now for just over a year, and I can't believe the amazing family values that I've seen and been a part of so far. And it just makes me think where we'll go together as a family of God this upcoming year. And Apostle Paul, he wrote to many different um, cities throughout this time when he was um, trying to get people to believe in Jesus Christ. He told the Romans in chapter 12, so in Christ we, though many, from, form one body, each member belongs to one another. And then Paul was talking to the Thessalonians, and he said this, to encourage and build one another up. Hmm. And so our challenge is to rise above. We may have different opinions, different ideas. We may be black, white, Hispanic, whatever it may be. But God is saying to love one another, to listen to each other's stories so we can build God's kingdoms even bigger. But where does this all start? Well, I believe it all starts with children. It's amazing how vigilant they can seriously be. Their eyes are ever so watchful, their ears ever so attentive, and their minds, they're absorbing everything that we say to them. And if they see us patiently providing a happy home, atmosphere for the family and our church, they'll do the same. And these wise parents that we have out there, and many of you now that have grandkids and great-grandkids, how are they doing? They're part of you, they're part of your family. How did you help raise that child? Well, hopefully we have been wise builders during our times and role models for our families, communities, and our churches, even though, again, we may have different ideas of how life goes. But here's a great story that I found. It was this elderly Hispanic Catholic lady was amazed by this young, white, Lutheran German boy. She, he would always go to her house, help her out, mow her yard, shovel her driveway in the winter. And one day, this old Catholic Hispanic woman went to this young, white, German Lutheran and said, how did you become such a nice young man? And so the boy said, well, you're not going to believe this, but I have a drug problem. And she said, what? You have a drug problem? What do you mean? Well, I got to tell you, I was drugged to Sunday school. I was drugged to confirmation class. I was drugged to church every Sunday, and we sat in the exact same pew. I got a drug problem, I tell you. And you know what this drug problem has done for me now? I go to church every Sunday. I love my neighbor, and I love people who are different from me. Like you're a Catholic woman. You go to your Catholic church. I'm a Lutheran young man. You're Hispanic. I'm white. You drive a Chevy. I drive a Ford. I still love you regardless of who you are. It doesn't matter. We're all under God's house today. And so he said and continued, I pray I continue to have this drug problem the rest of my life. And I pray we all have this same drug problem to love each and every one here and throughout the world, whoever we meet. Amen. And please stand and we'll sing, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, in number 773.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray for the people of God in Christ and for all people according to their needs. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for having mercy on us even when we rebel against you. Thank you for sending us your dear Son to free us from all evil. Thank you for preparing us to bear the weight of your glory in our bodies, hearts, minds, and souls. Merciful God, God of salvation, bring wholeness to all your children. Anoint the hands of all caregivers, nurses, doctors, therapists, hospice workers, and chaplains. Look with compassion on all who cry for your healing. Joyce, Harris, J, Opal, Rick, Matt, Ken, Josh, Dale, Gwen, Kim, Robert, Harris S., Krista, Diane, Doug, and Harriet. Merciful God. And thank you, dear Father, for our loved ones who have died in your embrace, including Wayne, Mark, and Robin Hemmingson, Cal Werps, and Lorna Bader. Grant comfort to all whose grief runs deep. Keep us safely in your son's faithful care. Cheer us with your Holy Spirit. Guide our steps and shape our lives in accordance with your will. And give us a joyful reunion with all whom Christ claims as sisters, brothers, mothers, and friends. Merciful God. And Lord, renew the people of this congregation day by day. Remind us daily how we are a family under one house. Give us generous and willing hearts as we seek ways of serving you and sharing your love with those around us. Merciful God. And dear Heavenly Father, continue to watch over our farmers, family, and their friends, and continue to give them the weather that they need so their crops can be a great harvest come this fall. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trust in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
please stand. field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yes. Lift, oops, lift up your hearts. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who rose beyond the bounds of death, and on this day, as he has promised, poured out your spirit of life and power upon the chosen disciples. At this, the whole earth exalts in boundless joy. And in the night that Jesus was betrayed, Jesus took bread and broke it, gave to all the eat and said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave it all the drink, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us now pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For the gifts of God, for the people of God, all is ready and all are welcome.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll now sing our final hymn, Come Thy Fountain of Every Blessing, 807. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.